I'm glad you're here was today. He the, was he the guy that said He talked about ball everything ball? but the ball game. <laughs> You, know, you could do the Bob. You could oh, get a seat man. in the front row. You know, I saw him going through an airport in Dallas. Bob really? Euchre. Yeah. Did he pass? I feel, yeah, I think he did. He was a he was a crazy guy. He was funny. He was, you know. There's a lot of famous announcements. Now, Dick Vitale's still alive, I think. Mm -hmm. Who's the Who's the guy that just passed that had that famous call the Sandy Koufax game? Who is that? The Dodgers announcer. I don't remember. Joanna, get those numbers on my desk. Oh, I thought you were going to say Joanna. I thought mm -hmm. his name was Joanna. I thought, no, that Boy can't be right. Boy named Sue. That Timothy can't be Never. right. What's that? Timothy Never? No, no, it was somebody. Vin Scully, that's Vin who it was. Vin Scully. Fi finally oh, came to me just seconds before Joanna said None of them could hold a candle to Ralph Gar, the mouth of the South. The mouth of the South. Yeah, we talked He's about him 94. before. 94 years old, Vin wow. Scully was before he passed. He was wow. famous for his ability to, to come up with stuff that sounded like he'd written it beforehand, but he was just saying it all on the fly. Yeah, there's someone, someone did a, um, they transcribed his announcing of Sandy Koufax's perfect game, the, the, just the ninth inning. Is that right? And it's just, you read it and it's like, it's, it's, it's like a perfect sports article, but he just came up with it all Sandy on the fly. Sandy Koufax. I hadn't heard that name and. 50 years. Well, here you're hearing it today. Wow. What an incredible pitcher he was. Uh, you've got something in common with him. What? Because he, the only way he was able to keep pitching was because he kept getting cortisone shots in his elbow. Oh, my word. And you said that yesterday. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. And I'm that was. listen, I thank the Lord for it, too. I joked that it was just pure morphine. Do you have any no, idea what it no. was? Um, no. I know there was some steroid in it. You know, yeah. steroid, and but I guess I don't know. Maybe cortisone is a steroid. I don't know. I've never yeah. looked at it, but um, it has helped Dr. me. Doctor Brunson is not a medical doctor. No, just for I'm not. the record. No, I'm the kind. Of, in fact, my father-in-law said I was the kind of doctor that couldn't help you. So <laughs> anyway, my good old father-in-law. He, he sounds really like encouraging. A <laughs> really encouraging. <laughs> Let's not get off on that. You know, we had the. You, you 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 already threw your poor wife under the bus last week with did her. I? Well, with your pants, she you said that she oh, was coming. Oh yeah, out well she it. did. She said, "I told you, <laughs> you look like you're up there in your daddy's clothes." That's a tough one. I'm I'm yeah. I'm sure. Did you get any more comments about that yesterday? Mm -mm, no. That's good. Did you get a lot of com or a lot of questions about the tabernacle that sort of thing? Oh my stars! People really coming yeah. at you. Yeah. That's what. No, no, just oh. you know. Curiosity, just making comments about it. Well, I'm I, I really, you know, it's just kind of, it was kind of out of my wheelhouse in the way I typically preach. It was definitely different. And, you know, it's different and it's so, it can be so complicated and so hard to, because I wanted to talk about the tenons. Tenon, a tenon is that piece of wood. If you've got a block of wood like this yeah. and you've got, at the bottom of it, you've got a piece that has been carved out. Yeah, so it fits That's in the That's a bottom. tenon. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it fits down in the socket. But it's hard to explain that. Yeah. Well, that's why we're here. Without a picture, without a diagram. We can take up to and an hour and I, a I got so many compliments. And in fact, I've got to get uh, Jared to send that video to Dr. Vines that uh, oh, he did, yeah. the, the oh, tabernacle. Yeah. Yeah, huh? the one yeah. that Jared made from scratch. Yeah. He just stayed up all night. Yeah. Just... Now we got that. Someone else made that on YouTube. I'm not sure who that. But yeah. But it was said... great. I could not have done. I, I, in fact, I was sitting there with David Edge this morning at the hospital, and yeah. Jan was saying, "Oh, that you know the video, the thing. It is really the, helpful. It's so helpful. Sure, it was. It, you couldn't understand it really without that." Well, I think it is, it, you know, for, for years and years, especially as you get into the seeker-sensitive era, I know that some, some more traditional churches, they were um, uh, very, very critical of the video screen thing. Like, you know, oh, like, word. don't want to have video screens, don't want to have a lyrics for that. We've got to have the hymnal, like those video screens. This is the, de the devil himself. But with, with I was preaching at a church in Georgia one night. And it was, and like it was packed. The place was packed out. And... I, I was talking about that very thing, the tradition of man, you know, because in Mark chapter seven, uh, they come to Jesus. Why don't you know? Why don't you observe the traditions of the elders? Oh, and right. and yeah, Jesus looks at me. He says, "You know, hey, you nicely set aside the word of God so you can keep." And I talked about. It, and I looked up and I said, "Just like screens, you know, 
Well, I started talking about that. The whole congregation just died laughing. They were just laughing. Unusual. You're like, I missed something I'm, here. I've missed something here. Did Until I got them? over with the sermon. He said, we just had a knockdown drag out in a deacon's meeting over putting up screens. And I, wow. I, I just thought to myself, the dumb things that we fuss and fight about in a church. But well, everybody's walking around with a screen right here. Yeah. Well, that's my, I've said this before, but that's one of my favorites where the, the guy in the deacon's meeting, they're having their deacon's meeting there in the sanctuary, and he says, over my dead body, will this church ever have a synthesizer on stage? And there's a pipe organ behind him, yeah. which is yeah. a synthesizer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's all semantics. Anyway, uh, what, what were we talking about? Yeah, you got the, you got the screens to help show you. Like, yeah. I, the, the tabernacle was a vision. It was like an object lesson of the glory of God from the beginning. Well, I think, it you know, is the, a visual thing. You know, the passage that you read just really states it pretty well. According to all that I'm going to show you, as the pattern, he says, I'm going to show it to you. Yes. I'm going to show you a pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of its furniture so you shall construct it. Well, and that's the most interesting thing to me, I guess we're getting into the message now, that like the tabernacle, it's not, so, it's not like something that God is originating here on earth to, to like point back to him. He's saying, and this is what we read in Hebrews chapter 9, that it's actual, there's, this thing actually exists in heaven in some point. It, there's some type of it, some form of it, some type of it. I, at least that's what he keeps saying in, in Hebrews 8 and 9. You know, that there's a copy of it. Yeah. There it is right there, mere copy of the true one. Right. The true one is in heaven. In heaven. Yeah. And so he's showing this model, like a, a revelatory vision to Moses. And then Moses has to build this on earth. But it's, I, I mean, that's the Lord's Prayer. It's something on earth as it already is. Yeah, in heaven. in heaven. Yeah. That is fascinating. I don't know. I, I have no, that'll be part of getting to heaven and you. See what it's like. See what it is. See um, if it's there. So when Moses put it together, um, and, and I know you're going to get to this more and more, but he really did it, and obviously he used Bezalel and Aholiab to put together all, you know, they were the ones that did the, 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 um, the mm -hmm. metal working, that sort of thing. So it was a team of people that put it together, but they did it according to the specifications that God had said, and I thought it was really, really interesting um, how I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss this. But I was just reading this morning in Numbers. I thought it was fascinating. It's in Numbers chapter 15 where, like, it talks about the court of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. um, why can I not find this? Anyway, it, ta it talks about how in the court, the sojourner shall be allowed to sacrifice alongside you. If someone is dwelling with yeah. you permanently, he shall be treated the same way. Yeah. If an alien sojourns with you, one who may be a It isn't See, they have these. See, see, that big number there is the chapter. Oh, is that right? Over. Okay. Oh, I was holding this upside down. Sorry about that, Pastor. <laughs> I, what is, I'm used to reading the Hebrew Bible. Anyway, you, you know are. You, you're, you're right. I'm, you're I used to it in the original. Read it from That's right. right. Trying to read I it from forgot. right to left. <clears throat> oh my goodness! Yes. Yeah, so, you, but you, I thought that was so funny that came up in the reading this morning, right. and you mentioned that yesterday how Solomon divided into yeah, two courts. Yeah, he did, and and Herod really divided his into four. Which yeah. That's... Which you, I've often wondered why. You know why? Why did God not just stop it before he ever got that far? Or. And I guess, you know, the Lord just says, well, have on at it. You know, it'll serve my purposes anyway. But it was not the way God had intended it to be. Well, and you talked about this at one point, like how Herod's, this is the last thing on the temple, then we'll get back to the tabernacle, but how Herod's temple, like how he like stamped his own name on all of the gold bricks or something like that. I, I know I've seen that somewhere. Like he built that in a way to glorify himself. As well, as you know, the, the stones, he does with the stones oh, okay. what really the Old Testament says you do not do. He beveled. If you go to Jerusalem and you look at the wall that is there, you'll see these big, massive stones, and they have a bevel. They're pretty. Uh, it, it's got this nice beveled edge around But God around said don't it. do that. Yeah, but he did it, and he did it, you know, I think because, well, it was the way he wanted to build it. He was yeah. not interested really in the way God had instructed it, but he was doing it to win favor with the Jews. He built 
he built that temple back in an effort to win favor with the Jews because he was really not a, he was half Jew. His mother was a Nabataean. And the Jews knew that. He'd made up his own personal history. Right. You right. know, to try to prove to him that he was a Jew, but he was not. He was an evil guy. He, listen, beyond anything you and I can imagine, he really was. Let me try to open my Bible and actually read it correctly this time. Okay. Um, so back, back to the, the tabernacle, because I know you're probably going to get to some more of the temple in the weeks to come anyway, because so much of the tabernacle then is echoed in the, in the yeah, temple yeah. eventually. I guess a couple of lightning round questions uh, um, that I got, uh, I got from people is, yeah, guys, I, I emailed that. you this, like yeah. the difference between what's happening in the tabernacle mm -hmm. and then what later on happens in the synagogue. Now, a oh. synagogue, that didn't even come to exist until... That was in the Babylonian captivity, is when the synagogue. The Babylonians had overthrown Judah, uh, the southern kingdom, and taken them all off into Babylonian... But they destroyed the city of Jerusalem, and they destroyed the temple. And so when the Jews got into... When the uh, Jews got into Babylon, uh, they then put together this concept of synagogue. It's a place to gather, to, to gather, worship, yeah. read. Right. But it was not a place of sacrifice. No. That's exclusive no. to the temple. That's exact. Yes, and I'm going to look at that <clears throat> this coming Sunday. Oh, okay. Because in Leviticus chapter, I think it's in 17. All right. But I'm not, I've not marked it in here yet. Anyway, they're told you, there's nowhere else. No, nowhere else you can go to sacrifice. And that becomes a problem for Israel because they're always sacrificing off on these hills and these mountaintops to these other gods. That's right, the high and God places. Has, the high places. And God has told them, you don't do that. You sacrifice in one place, and that's at the tabernacle, then at the temple. So um, the answer to that is yes. Whatever it was you asked me was... <laughs> So the I can't even remember The synagogue now. is different. Yes, so, it's different. Um, no sacrifice there. The tabernacle is it is a um, it is special because it is God's chosen resting place for His manifest presence. Right. It's the tent yeah. of meeting. It's and, where God. And you when you when you speak of the tabernacle, it always is a reference to that. There was never another one yes. like it. And it is. Now, the tent of meeting, because that was a question, too. You remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, we talked about Moses going out to the tent of meeting. Right. That was set up. Now, we have no, no specifications of that. All we know is it was a tent, and Moses would go out there to worship, go out there to talk to God and pray. So that, I never thought about that. So that was like the tabernacle before the tabernacle? Yeah, but it was not a tabernacle. Right, it was right. just a tent. The tent of meeting. Understood. So that was the tent of meeting. The tabernacle is the tabernacle. It's where God's presence would come down. It was, uh, you, you know, had the courtyard. It had the holy place and it had the holy of holies with the ark of the covenant. Dude, this is a, I had not thought about this until now. But did the tent of meeting? Did they just take that down once they built the tabernacle? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and the tabernacle in one place is called the tabernacle of witness, and in one place it is called the tabernacle of testimony. But either way, that's all the same. But it's all the same, same thing, structure. the tabernacle. Yeah. Man, there's so many ways to go at I wanted to talk really briefly just about um, the, the sheer scale of what had to happen there. Now, you talked about how the tabernacle itself is a relatively small structure. It is, yeah. Um, especially if you consider, I'd say it's well- It's about the size of your den in a bedroom, put together. Yes. You know, because I think the Holy of Holies is something like 15 by 15, and the uh, holy place would be 15 by, what's 45 less 15, 30? Yeah. 30 by 15, so. So it's almost, like, it almost feels like maybe like one of those Kind of crass to say, but like the size of a mobile home, or maybe one yeah, of those pretty it's about like that. homes. It was, like that. it was to not, it was, it was not to mimic, but it was to uh, convey to people who saw it that it was like a, like their homes in sure. a sense, and it was mobile. Right. The tabernacle was mobile. The temple is a permanent building. Yes. 
The tabernacle is always mobile. And when I go to Israel, if, you know, if uh, I couldn't do it this year because we were, just, we were just too timed out with everything, but normally I will take my group down to Shechem. And at Shechem, I can show you literally on the ground where they put the tabernacle. Yeah. It is clearly a marked out place. You see the outer court. You see where they put the tabernacle itself. Wow. And, uh, Does any of the foundation remain? Probably not the not. silver, no. Right. But you can see in the rock and all there where they put that thing. So talk to me, talk to me more about the mobility of the tabernacle. Because like God, it basically just says then that the, the cloud moves and then they pick it up and then they move. Mm -hmm. And like it's the, the language is very sparse. But you're well, saying... Well, you've got thousands of these priests. Yeah, there's Let's, this, this is a good example okay. right here, this okay. phone. All you've right. got thousands of these priests. You've got them from the family of the Merarites that are here. Uh-huh. The Gershonites, Gershonites, I right. think, are here, and the Kohathites are here, and then Moses' family and all is here, and Aaron's family is camped alongside him here at the, at the eastern side mm -hmm. uh, where the gate is. So you've got thousands of these priests. Yeah, I think Numbers records it as 22,000 Levites that were capable of that. So what they would do is the Merarites were the ones who would go and pick up the foundation. But they would take it apart. You'll see a little bit of this this Sunday. They take the thing apart. Part, some of these were responsible for all of the veils and the right. that kind of thing. Another was part of the frame and the structure and the furniture. That was it. I think the Kohathites were responsible for the furniture and all. And then the Merarites would go in and pick up the foundations. Um, wow. These 125 pound blocks. Well, now, you can pick up 125 pounds. Well, you probably want to team lift it. But, yeah, you know. but you could pick, I mean, a man yeah. can pick it up. Yeah, that's, 125, that's, that's not just outrageous. Yeah. But you, they could pick it up, especially if they're working out like this all the time. So they'd pick those things, but they had it a system of how they would take it down. Have yes. you ever watched a circus or a fair do this? Sure. I mean, yeah. those guys are in a system. You know, they get in there and this one starts and then this one picks up and this one. So that's what they did. So that they could pick that thing up and move it, I would imagine, within a matter of hours with all of the people, that, with all of the priests that were there to do it. That's just incredible synchronization that they were able to do that. Have you read anything about what, you know, I, I, I thought about those linen walls. Mm -hmm. Like out there, I mean, obviously people were forbidden from touching them, you know, like on penalty of death. But surely you get out, sorry to call you Shirley, but definitely when you get out there, like there's dust that gets kicked up, there's sand. I mean, you're out in the wilderness for crying out loud. I mean, do they have to get up there and clean it? Is that part of the Well, Gladys, I would imagine that they probably, <laughs> that they probably you, you would. You were waiting for that one. You know, probably would. Um, yeah, I, you know, Debbie was asking something about that the other night. <clears throat> and I said, well, I'm sure they would have to replace. And she said, well, they never had to replace their shoes. They never, their clothes well, now, never that's wore a really good point. out. So I don't know. It doesn't. At least I've not come across it where it says that. Yeah, I mean, why would that? Why would God not have kept that? You know, miraculously. Mm -hmm. That thing lasted that. five to six hundred years. That's now that's amazing. an amazing thing, from the t right here, the time of Moses at Mount Sinai, all the way through the kingship of David, because when Solomon becomes king, then they start. David moves the ark to. Um, Jerusalem. You know, he brings the ark up. I don't. I can't remember off the top of my head where they pitched that thing. Bob, do you remember what they did with it after he brought it up there? I read it last but it was, year. But it I was remember. up there somewhere around Jerusalem, and then David dies, and Solomon pretty well starts with the temple. Um, that... I mean, we, we, you need to do another Wednesday night series and like do the movement of the ark and all that sort of thing. You know? Well, I'm going to do some of that on... Um, on the 10th of September. Oh, that's right. I, gonna, yeah, the cloud's you're... going to move. But the thing that, the point that I want to make is we look back on 50 years is that we right. can't stand there looking in the rearview mirror. The cloud's moving. It's, it's, it's lifting up and it's moving forward. Well, and I guess to follow that analogy, like that means if we are going to move forward, 
we need to be well organized. We need to know what our roles are. Yeah. We're if, moving the church. Let's, let's <laughs> just go ahead and throw that out there. Get up brick by brick. Yeah, and scare half the people. Not this many, will be rumored throughout the church. Not many Sunday. people know this, but the foundation of this building is solid silver. Yeah. Jim yeah. Key told me that's why it cost $20 million to build. <laughs> or, what, or whatever it was. Solid silver. But no, that's a good point. Like, well, and that was another question. Like, does the, someone asked me, does the tabernacle move? As the, as the people move, and it's really the opposite. The people have to move mm -hmm. as the presence of God Yes, moves. as the cloud would lift up, they would all pack up and move out, pack the temple up and move it out. That is just fascinating to think about. Uh, well, I get, we, we need to finish up here in a second, but I guess talk to us a little bit about your decision um, be, this, this past Sunday to, we, to use the curtains to come in and to dim the lights a little bit. Just tell, let's talk again through like how that does simulate some of that tabernacle experience. Well, you know, people are so visual today, honestly, uh, because of screens. <laughs> people are so visual yeah, we're used and, it, to and it helps, you know, you, you make somebody stop and think, this isn't the normal way I come in here. Why are they doing this? Well, I want you to stop and think about this is how a Hebrew would walk into the tabernacle. This is how he'd come into the eastern gate. He would come in through that eastern gate this way. Uh, in the tabernacle, it was dark. Um, there would be a lot of smoke, especially off of the incense altar. Right. Not just the altar that was outside, but the incense altar inside the tabernacle would have kept that place and it would have been very sweet smelling. It would have been very, you know, just like incense. Yeah, uh, that's really interesting. But to a higher degree. So, you know, so that, I, I just want them to have somewhat of the experience. And, of course, Denny is going to build us an altar. Right, not this, and this week, we but got the next shots. Week. There is a place in Israel up in the, where the tribe of Dan was. Okay. In the north. And if you get back in the woods, it's a, it's a Hebrew park. It's, a, it's an Israeli park. Um, and so if you get back, you walk back about a mile in through the woods, and you get back to a place where Jeroboam set up one of the golden calves. It was a center for worship in the north. When the ten tribes went off into, into uh, their own, became their own kingdom, and they rebelled, uh, Jeroboam set up, not, not the king Jeroboam, but... Um, the jerk Jeroboam, um, set up a place there and one down in, where was it, Bethel? I can't remember. But he set one up there. The platform is still there. That's amazing. The platform that Jeroboam put that golden calf on is up there in the woods. It's now, nobody goes back in there and looks at that, but I take my group in there. And they also have the place where the altar was. He built an altar to the specifications of the altar that was in uh, the temple that was in Solomon's temple. And so he built it there. Now, the place, the foundation is still there, but they've come in and they have just put up a frame that frames in, you know, piece of metal, yeah. four pieces of metal coming up. They wrap a band and then they do the horns on the altar to kind of give you a concept. That's there. He built the, he rebuilt the altar to a false god. Yeah, yes, he built an altar there on the scale of the one that was in the temple at Jerusalem, up there in the, in the area of Dan, there at the platform, so that they would come. He, he did not want them to go back down to Jerusalem. If they went back down to Jerusalem, they were going to abandon him, and eventually they were going to join back up. And he wanted to provide them a place of their own worship, wow, that is which so was blasphemous. against God's will and God's word. And there they sacrificed to this golden calf. They still haven't got the golden calf out their system and yet. You think that they would have figured that out. Well, well so they go off into Syrian captivity in 722, and that kind of does it for them. That, that finishes that up. They so, don't have a problem with it anymore. So I know you're prepping for this, this coming message. You're going to preach on God's desire for us in worship. Yeah, I think I'll Or work in, in, our, in our lives. Is that, at least that's what you told me yesterday. Did you, mm -hmm. Are you going to do something different? You love mm -hmm, to change mm -hmm, it up mm -hmm. on me. Oh. No, no, no. So what are, I guess you can shoot from the hip on this. Like what are some ways that we as, as part of the congregation, we can be preparing for worship 
even before we get there. You know, I read something the other day, some, and I don't know who the preacher was, but I saw it on some social media thing, and he said, just get to church 15 minutes early. He mm -hmm. says, fix, yeah. it, fix it in your schedule on Sunday morning where you get to church 15 minutes early, and you just walk in the auditorium or, or your classroom or wherever you're going, just walk in there, sit down, be quiet, don't talk, but just spend that time, that 15 minutes in prayer, getting your heart and your settled, your mind calm, and just beginning to focus on worship. And I thought that was a great idea. Mm -hmm. And then I walked in, like I do on Sunday mornings, and y'all are in there like 7 o'clock, 7.30. And I walk in, and there's Dr. Blackburn sitting back there. Y'all are singing something, whatever you were, and he's back there praying. And I thought, well, that's just exactly what, the, of course, he's here a couple hours early. Mm -hmm. um, that's exactly what the guy was saying. I call it the 8 a.m. 8 service. Yeah. There's, there's certain people that come in, and I won't say who they are, but there's people that just come in and they're go praying. And Name them. Just go on. Start well, I'll, no, I'll that's say all. their initials. Their initials are Kathy Compton. Yeah. I killed them no. last week when you said that. That was so funny. <laughs> Um, no, I'm not going to say who they are, but it, but it, it really is. And I tell this to the, to the, the team when we're there. I'm, I'm just like, yes, a lot of times it's hectic while we're getting the technology and the music and everything ready, but it still is a time of worship. Yeah. Like, it still is a time of us preparing. You know, we're, we're fortunate on, the, on that team because we get to experience these songs and these elements of worship, you know, more times than the average Well, you person. stop and think when they would stop somewhere, when the cloud would settle and they would stop, all of these priests would begin to put that t tabernacle together. Hmm. So cool. they would begin by laying down those stones. They would begin by, you know, putting up the fence, the wall of separation and uh, doing all of this stuff. And if you stop and think about that, do you think as they put that thing up, they were chewing tobacco, spitting, you know, um, T talking about this, that, and the other, you know, just being crude or whatever. No, it was a holy act yeah. of putting this thing up. That's why several times when I have built at a church, I will have a big lunch for all the construction workers, yeah. all of the people that have been in the design, everybody's there, and I get up and give them the gospel. Good point. And That's then I good. tell them, as you build this, I want you to know how they built the temple. And I'll talk to them about how they built the temple and the reverence that went. I said, please watch your mouth while you're here. Hmm. Please watch your attitudes while you're here. What you're doing here is far more significant than anything you'll do in building anything else unless you're building another church. Now, it's not that there's some superstition or it's like a rabbit's foot or anything, but this is a place that is set aside for the worship of God. I've had men saved out of that. I've had construction workers give their life to the Lord uh, out of that. But, and I just say that to say this, we come into church so often never thinking of reverence, anymore decorum, um, uh, you know, is our heart right? Are we prepared to come into this place to do what we're coming in to do and that is to worship the Lord? So that's the way I see that they would put this thing. And they did it. How many? Umpteen number for over 40 years. They're moving well, around. maybe not quite 40 years. 38 years, 39 years they did it. Then they got it into to the land at Shechem. And then all of Israel, until they built the temple, they'd go up to Shechem there until David moved the ark, you know. Can't wait to hear so. more about that. Well, thank you for that word, just about how our hearts need to be prepared and how... Praise the Lord, we don't need a tabernacle anymore, but it's the same God. We need to give him that same reverence. Why do you glory. think Sunday morning is an absolute chaos in your home? Is this a question personal? No, 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 not for you. I, we know it's not in your home. Um, <laughs> but why, why is it such chaos in your home on Sunday morning? Well, it's, it's, it's because it's always under sometimes attack. Sometimes I would him. hear my daddy go out the door singing, there will be peace in the valley someday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, say goodbye, Kirkwood. Goodbye, Kirkwood. I stepped on a water bottle. Yikes. <laughs>